Holy crap! I think we've got up! This is the flavor of the ocean, it's delicious. My name is Luke Nguyen. My parents are Vietnamese. I was born in Thailand. Australia is my home and Vietnam is my passion. Vietnamese food is fresh, it's delicate, it's very well balanced and one of the most refined cuisines in the world. With the help of street food vendors, home cooks and my food obsessed family, I'll be showing you simple, fragrant and delectable dishes. My love for Vietnam runs deep and my passion for cooking and learning more about Vietnam's diverse cuisine is a quest I would like to share with everyone. I will start my journey from bustling Ho Chi Minh City, travelling down the mighty Mekong Delta then up to the ancient town of Hoi An, visiting many beautiful places in between. I'll be discovering cottage industries that have been operating for centuries, catching fish with the locals, harvesting peppercorns, exploring the floating markets on the Mekong River and visiting the beaches of the beautiful island of Phu Quoc. I'll also learn how to make noodles, tofu and rice paper and use all these fabulous ingredients in my recipes. Vietnamese markets are a world unto themselves. The vibrant colours and smells constantly entertain and surprise the senses. I'm here in front of the largest market in Ho Chi Minh City, the Bentan Markets, where I'll find the freshest produce to cook my authentic, traditional southern recipe. My biggest challenge now is crossing the road. So it's a bit daunting crossing the road in Saigon, 5 million motorbikes. I usually just leave my right hand out and walk at a really steady pace, don't stop, and the traffic will just go around you. Pretty much an organised chaos, except when the big ones come past. These are fresh prawns, they're $85,000 a kilo, $85,000 I should say, which is around 8 bucks bargain. And it's alive and kicking. This is what I love about Vietnam, like the freshness of the produce, pre preparation of the food, shaving each trotter, I think he shaves around 50 a day. We've got fresh meat over here, no refrigeration, it's freshly slaughtered every morning. The fish is alive, pippies out of the tank, you come here every day. Maybe twice a day. What am I cooking for lunch today? Fresh mud fish, prawns, bring it back, and then you cook it. And then dinner, what's dinner? Back to the market. Get some more fresh fish, more fresh meat. It's absolutely amazing. And this is what I love about this country. I adore it. But here I've got a mud fish from the Mekong Delta. I love the muddiness of the fish, of course, and its texture. The skin is actually quite tough, so I've asked her to skin it, not only scale it, but also skin it as well. And just kind of chop the fish into little pieces so it's close to the bone and we get all the sweetness from the bone. So she's going to do it right now. Come on, back, you have. When you're back, 50,000 dong, $4. Today I want to cook for you a very traditional southern Vietnamese dish. It's a dish called Gan Chu Ga, which is a tamarind broth with mudfish. This is one of my favourite dishes and it has all the elements of Vietnamese cuisine. I'm going to start with some tamarind. Now this is a sour tart tamarind which brings the, the citrus element to it. What I've done is I've mixed it with some, some water, some hot water, and I've muddled it through and I'm going to strain it through into some fish broth here. that goes in. I'm going to strain all the pulp through and just get some tamarind water. And it's as simple as that. Now if you're at home, you can do this in advance and keep the tamarind water in the fridge for a month. And you can throw it in stir fries, throw it in curries or make this delicious fresh fragrant soup. So that's all strained through. Now Vietnamese food is all about balance. So I've got the tart sourness, and I'm going to balance that out with a bit of sweets. So I've got around 75 grams of sugar, just white sugar or caster sugar, and of course the main element in this is the fish sauce. 
So a bit of salty there. So we've got the salty, the sour. We don't like to fillet our fish in Vietnam or through Asia, but the sweetness is right next to the bone. So we'll cook that, and everything goes in, yeah? The head, the whole lot, the eyes, the cheeks, the favorite parts. Cook that through. Now once we bring that to the boil, texture. Texture is the next step. We've got some elephant ear stem, which is this big thing. Now the reason why it's called elephant's ear is the whole leaf is this gorgeous huge leaf which resembles an elephant's ear. Now if you look here, it's very spongy. This sponge absorbs all the broth, all the flavor that I'm cooking with. So we cut that into big chunks. And once that boils, I just top that up. I've also got some okra here, which again, it's all about texture. Okra for me, you kind of love or you hate it. I love it. It excretes this kind of mucus, kind of beautiful texture, which thickens the soup. And I love that part of okra. Finally slice that, might get a few more. I'm gonna throw that into my broth. So I'm gonna put some sweet in there with the pineapple. Just gonna give that a quick taste and it's gotta be very balanced out. That's perfect. I'm gonna throw my tomato in there. So just chunk your tomato, one's probably enough. I can smell that coming out now, very aromatic and fragrant. What I have to do is I'll get my temperature gauge and just turn up the heat a bit. Here I'm cooking as the locals would, an earthenware stove here with a clay pot. And then the clay pot releases this earthiness into the flavor of the soup, which I absolutely adore. I've got to turn up the heat a bit, it's got to reach the boil, come on. I'm going to introduce you to rice paddy herb. Rice paddy herb, citrus, cumin characteristics, it goes perfect with this tamarind fish soup. I've also got some sawtooth coriander, which is in the coriander family, or cilantro as you would call it. It's going to chop that up together. Put some more bean sprout on top, more crunch. I've also fried up some fried red Asian shallots and some fried garlic. And of course I'll bring the last element to this dish which is going to be the subtle spice. Now we don't really cook with a lot of chilli in our food but we just add it to the end just for a bit of colour and just a bit of spice and if we want more chilli, chilli on the side with a bit of fish sauce, perfect. Here we have a very traditional, authentic southern Vietnamese dish, gan chu galop. Now you would serve this with vermicelli noodles or steamed jasmine rice. This is fuel for cooking at home, you know, as we did. It's in the clay pot burner. Very primitive. And she would do this all day and she's what? Bác mấy tuổi bác? Yeah? 70 years old. Amazing, amazing. And she loves that around all day, selling to the different street food markets, the street stores and the restaurants around Saigon. It's a real eye opener. Vietnam was over 10 years ago. The streets were dotted with street food. I would move from one vendor to the next. Today, in the middle of Saigon District 1, I'm spoiled by restaurants like this called Quang Ngong, offering dishes from all through Vietnam. The simplicity of the Hanoi cuisine from that station. I'll move on to this station offering the Imperial cuisine of Hue, and I'll move down there, and I've got Saigon dishes offering six courses, costing you less than $10. Do we have a dish from the south? It's called Van Sel, which is a crisp rice flour crepe. And we're moving up north here to Hanoi, where we have a dish called Bun Cha. We have a dish from Imperial Hue called Ban Bel. This is a, a southern dish. It's called Gai Kun, and it's basically soft rice paper rolls with perilla leaf, vermicelli, mint, some beautiful tiger prawns and pork. And it's rolled up softly with a little sprig of garlic chives at the end. These dishes are textual, fresh, fragrant and I just get overwhelmed with all the food and the energy. I've got a freshly pressed guava juice. Where can you find this in the world? It's absolutely amazing. Here I said 
set in front of the busiest and the best green papaya stands in Ho Chi Minh City. We're in front of Hai Bajung Street here, where hundreds of bikes will stop, get their takeaway and move on. And we've got people across the park who sit under the tree and a lady screams from across the road, two green papaya salads! And then she'll hear through the traffic and through the people who pair it and they'll run off with the two plates. It's the funniest experience, unbelievable. She's been here for 30 years. Oh yeah! make my own green papaya salad, but I'm going to make it with uh, some pork belly, some prawns, and five different herbs that you'll find through Vietnam, which is the essential ingredient in this very textural, clean, and simple salad. If I can make it on the street, you guys can make it at home. Now this is a green papaya. A green papaya is basically unripened pawpaw. So there's two types. There's a long elongated one and one that's shaped as a pear. I like the long one. It's a little bit sweeter. Now the idea guys is just to shave it, nice clean shave, and you'll see that there's some sap coming out of the skin here. If you have sensitive skin, wear gloves. This is used as a uh, meat tenderizer as well, very popular in Mexico, and it tenderizes all the meat and it's very quite medicinal. Green papaya is quite mild in flavour, but very high in texture. One of my favourite vegetables. So I'm going to shave the skin off quickly. Compost that in the garden, as we do. And I found one of these tools at the markets, a green papaya shredder. Just light shredding. Look at that, beautiful. So easy to do. If you can't pick one of these up at the markets, use a trusty knife. Just kind of chop, 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 chop really quickly, like a kung fu master. And then grab your peeler and just peel it off. And you have the same result. Now I've shredded my papaya, it took less than two minutes. What I've done first is I've uh, drowned it in some cold water just to keep it nice and crunchy. And I've drained the water out again. Next is I'll grab my piece of mint. Every salad must have five elements of Vietnamese herbs. So I'll pick maybe 12 pieces of mint. We've got Vietnamese mint here, we've got fresh perilla leaf, we've got spear mint, Vietnamese coriander, and I'll just chop up really nice and fine. Just going to put that into my salad. Gorgeous colour. And I've also slow cooked some pork belly. Bit of water, touch of salt, kind of I bring it to the boil and then I low it simmer it for maybe around 10 minutes. And if you don't like your fat in there then just cut it out. I boiled out some prawns. Probably just need around four for this one. Cut that in half. Throw that in, cut them directly in half. There you go. Now, because I'm on the street in Saigon, just gotta get rid of the flies. There you go, they're all gone now. Okay, back to the salad. What I'm gonna put in here is red Asian shallots. I've sliced them finely, and I'm just gonna put them in. I've also got some fried garlic chips. And I've made this very well balanced, very flavorsome, sweet fish sauce. It's basically three tablespoons of fish sauce, three tablespoons of white vinegar, maybe two cups of water, some sugar, and I'm gonna put some fresh lime in this one. Cut that lime in half. Fresh lime, just to balance that out. Three tablespoons is all it needs. Okay, get your hands in there, mix it up. Now you can already see that it's so full of freshness, so full of colour, vibrant colour, and of course, so full of texture. And the last textural piece, roasted peanuts. And of course, the chili to finish. Every 
every mouthful, five or six different textures. So there's your guided or tempted green papaya salad with prawns and pork. Delicious. It's at sunset when many locals venture out to enjoy the cooler parts of the day. And for me, it's a chance to also escape the heat and soak up all the atmosphere. People exercise, have a chat, or just sit by the river watching the many boats go by. food vendors with food carts roaming the streets. There are no shortage of customers buying the many local dishes on offer. I found myself by the busy Saigon River in search of somewhere to cook my wok toss beef with wild beetle leaves and lemongrass. I woke up this morning with a little bit of a headache and I was wondering what can I eat or what can I drink to make me a little bit better and I remember when I was younger my grandmother would make me this special dish, a very cooling dish and she used beetle leaves. Now this is a wild beetle leaf, shiny on one side, very smooth on the, on the other, and it's very medicinal. It's got lots of vitamins, lots of minerals, and lots of essential oils as well. It's slightly bitter, and when it's cooked, the aromas that come out release such a unique flavor, nothing like anything else. And uh, you'll find that in modern Asian restaurants, you'll have a beetle leaf, and they'll put you know smoked trout or some prawns on there, and they'll wrap it up and they eat it raw as it is. But in Vietnamese cuisine, we like to cook this up. Once it's char grilled, and once it's wok fried, the aromas come out and it's absolutely delicious. Watch out for these. In Vietnamese, it's called lalo, and they're very fantastic to use in cooking. Now today, I was thinking about this dish, and I was wondering, where can I cook this dish? And you can't get more Vietnam than here. I've always loved these little carts. This little one here sells fish balls, beef balls, and stir-fried corn. This is An Tuong. I asked him, An Tuong, can I borrow your cart? No problem, what are you going to cook? I want to cook a wok fried dish with maybe beef and beetle leaves. He goes, well, why don't you do the beetle leaves wrapped in, you know, give me all these different recipes. It's just absolutely amazing. So here, I'm going to pluck around 12 beetle leaves. An Tuong, khoảng 12 cái đồ. 12 cái đồ. He's going to help me. So I'm going to get, yeah, bắt đầu khoảng 12 cái đi anh. Rồi, bắt đầu, là, 12 cái. 1, là đến bên kia. So we're probably near around, Maybe 15 to 20 of these. A bit of help from my friend, I'll be done pretty quickly. Now with these leaves, I remember cutting my hand when I was younger, and my grandmother came out and said, come here, come here, come here. No band-aids, beetle leaf, just wrapped it up, and she used it as an antiseptic. So I've got around 15 leaves. I'm just gonna slice that in chunky pieces, not too fine. The other, aromatic vegetable I've got in here is lemongrass. So I've got lemongrass here, I'll, go, I'll use a white part only. Now when you're chopping lemongrass at home, just peel the outer leaves off the dried leaves and make sure you use a big heavy knife because it's quite tough. Small knives won't do the job. So I've got my nice heavy knife here. I'm going to chop the end off. Nice strong motion. So the heavy knife cuts through it pretty easily. Now I need to dice that up quite finely. Okay, now if you've got two heavy knives at home, you do it the way Vietnamese and Chinese do it. Two knives. You make a bit of a mess, but as you get your fine diced lemongrass. That's pretty diced up now, it's perfect. Now the other thing I need to dice up is my chili as well. Everything's diced, the garlic, the chili, and it's gonna be very fast execution of the dish in a hot fry pan. Got some chili. Fresh chili. Okay, now we need to dice up that chili as well, quite fine, as fine as we did the lemongrass. I think I'll give Dunga a job at my restaurant in Sydney. Perfect. Okay, so I've done all my mise en place, everything's ready to rock and roll. Last thing is the meat. Nice, fine slices of sirloin here. 
two millimeter slices. So for this fish, you'll need around 300 to 400 grams of beef. Now we don't have the luxury of having a jet burn wok fry here, because we're on the street of Vietnam. With all the energy, all the action, all the excitement, this is why I love this country. So I've got a little fry pan and a little portable cooker that I borrowed from Mr. Tuong's little vending machine here. Or street vendor, I should say. And got here, look, 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 look. So when you stir fry anything, make sure the pan or the wok you're using is extremely hot. And you see that it's smoking right now. And the cooking process needs to be fast and furious. So it's hot, I'm gonna add my oil. That's open, there you go. Oil's in. Probably about two tablespoons for this one because we've got to get all the lemongrass and all the chili and garlic nice and fragrant. Okay, so that's hot. Mr. Dung, can I please have my lemongrass? Sa? He can't speak English, I forgot. Sa? Kai. Sa, yo, ha? Tai. Two cloves of garlic. Chili. Oh, that smells good. Chili. Oh, that is so fragrant. Chili is going up my nose. I'm about to sneeze, so that's perfect. Now I've got my beef. Okay, I'm gonna throw my beef in. Now it's gotta be high heat. So the beef's in. through there, just slightly chuck that up, stir that through, and that's your dish, Bossalala, beef wok toss with wild beetle leaf and lemongrass. This place is a real eye-opener for me of how life would have been if my family hadn't decided to go to Australia as refugees. Discovering the family experience is something that I'm looking forward to sharing with you.